or night, depending on when you're watching this. But we're so glad that you are joining us in worship online today. And I'm going to be uh, reading a scripture, uh, Psalm 121, for our call to worship today. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Would you pray with me today? Dear God, we just come together from all over the place today. Perhaps people from around Tucson, perhaps even people from around the country, or even someone from somewhere else in the world. God, we just thank you that your people are everywhere, that you are with us no matter where we are. God, we thank you for your promises today. We ask that you would remind us to lift our eyes, our hearts, and our lives to you. And God, we pray that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I hope that you will sing along with us at home. We'll be singing two songs right now. The first one is called Waymaker, and the second one is called Highlands. You 
Father, we thank you that we can be confident in your goodness and your faithfulness and your presence in spite of the circumstances we find ourselves in. We thank you for your presence where we are as we worship you even now. We thank you and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome to worship this morning. I'm Pastor Pete and I, along with our team of nine here in our Northminster Sanctuary here in Tucson want to welcome you to worship today. Uh, we're here uh, leading worship, and uh, we're glad that you're in streaming with us in some whatever way you're doing that. We also have a team of hosts that are uh, ready to chat with you and help you with uh, providing resources and links in the little chat areas of whatever uh, feature you are uh, streaming us this morning. So we're glad to worship together. A couple things I want to highlight for you in the ways that we as a church continue to connect and grow and serve in Jesus' name. One of the ways that we're connecting is via our online welcome card. Please take a minute and find where that is uh, on your screen. If it's not there, easy to find. The, the hosts are going to put a link there for you. Uh, click that welcome card. Let us know who you are and how you are and ways that we can be praying for you, uh, we'd love to hear back from you. It's a way for us uh, as a church to encourage one another. So please um, help us with that. We have our Northminster Live web page, which is a place where you can find all the different resources that you can find as we're continuing this season of worshiping at a distance. So you can uh, find that link, check out those resources there. Uh, there are ways that you can find our worship bulletin this morning that you can follow along. Also, there are some more detailed announcements about how you can uh, give offerings, etc. So please find those resources uh, on your screen there. Uh, as we continue to seek ways to grow, the information is also there where you can, uh, with your kids, with your students, with uh, any age adult, we've got groups and uh, Zoom classes and Facebook groups. You can link and find those there. Also, as we continue to serve our community, uh, there are ways that you can help us with that. Our Deacons Outreach is continuing to provide an important uh, resource of food and groceries to our community. Last Tuesday, we gave out 67 bags of groceries, so we're continuing to need those uh, to replenish our shelves because our shelves are getting empty. We want to give away all that we have uh, when it comes to our Deacons Pantry. So. If you can help us get more, either by donating the food or by contributing to that fund, there are going to be links shared for how you can do that. We're also continuing to offer our Caridad meal program on Monday evenings as a, on a pick-up-and-go basis. I think that's all that we have for the announcements for this morning. Uh, why don't we continue to worship as we pray together? Will you join me? Oh, Lord, we thank you for this gift of worship for that promise that says that you are always present. You're always with us. You are faithful. And so we thank you. We pray today uh, for our community and our world as we continue to go through these processes of, of uh, being safe. We know that there's a lot of struggling happening. Not only those who are suffering because of the COVID-19 virus, but for those who are caring for those people and for the people who care for those people. Uh, there are doctors and nurses who are isolated uh, from their families. Lord, continue to protect them and give them peace in this season of healing, of finding hope in you. Lord, we pray and our hearts ache uh, for those whose employment has been affected in this season of of staying at home, Lord, for these 
for the ways that jobs have been affected, reduced, or lost. Lord, there's a lot of uh, fear that comes into play in this season. And so we pray, God, that we would trust you, that you would be the great provider, in the Old Testament referred to as Jehovah Jireh, to provide for the needs of every family, every person that is struggling today. Lord, we look to you. And we continue to pray, Lord, for our leaders, for the wisdom to make good and wise decisions, to hear the voices of the people, but to know that those voices are often different. But listening is so, so important. So we pray that above all, our leaders would be good listeners and that still their decisions would be wise and helpful for our communities. We long to return back to the way it was and we fear that it won't ever be the same. But Lord, what we can be assured of is that you are the same, that you are unchanging, and that you are forever our rock who is faithful. Lord, we pray that we might be faithful as well. So would you increase our faith? Would you be with us as we continue to struggle and have doubts? Would you help us with our sin, Lord, as we turn inward sometimes and as we feel isolated? Lord, help us to not commit those sins that are so easily entangling of us. But may we continue to confess our wrongs and our undoings and and the things that we meant to do correctly. May we continue to turn all that over to you, Lord. That you would remove, remove stumbling blocks. That you would, by your grace, turn them into stones that would be solid stepping stones for our life. Lord, we thank you that you are God who hears us, who answers our prayers. We thank you that you call forth our lives and the offerings of our lives. And so now as we continue in our worship, Lord, as we symbolically share in the offerings of our lives, as we symbolically pray for and lift up real, real gifts that support this church and the missions that we are entrusted to to helping and to being a part of, Lord, will you remind us that you are the source of all good gifts, that you are trustworthy, that you are powerful, that we can place our hope and trust in you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.
we were singing hallelujah, and uh, one of the things I've learned is to say hallelujah really loud. Can we all do that, the nine of us that are here? Uh, say hallelujah, and will you at home, will you say hallelujah wherever you are really loud so your neighbors can hear it? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We continue to worship in the season of Easter, and we're blessed to worship together. Thank you, uh, worship team, for sharing that. And while we're at it, while we're kind of interacting a little bit, would you take a minute there in your chat to go ahead and let us know where you are tuning in from this morning. It is a real encouragement, uh, as I've been an online pastor a couple of these times, it's a real encouragement to see people interact and say where, we're, where you're uh, worshiping from this morning. So on whatever platform you are on this morning, just take a minute, greet one another, say hi, greeting, and then I'll be back in about 30 seconds and I'll have a special message for the children. Okay, maybe that's been enough time for you to greet one another. But you continue to you can continue to uh, use that chat feature to uh, ask questions or share information with each other to greet one another. Uh, especially, it's helpful during the sermons if you ask questions. No, I'm just joking about that. Um, but it is a uh, great time to be together. Now, kids, I've got a special message for you. Now, uh, adults, you can listen in as well. But I've been thinking about questions. Okay. Oh, first off, before I say before I say more, we do have this special kids online uh, Facebook group that we'd love for you to check out. There are ways that you can uh, find interactive things to do this week. We have a midweek online group, and uh, it's a lot of fun. So take some time to check that out there. Also, we have some downloadable worship bulletins that you can find. Uh, there will be links shared for you as well. All right. So I've been thinking though about questions and hard questions. I've been trying to think of the hardest questions I have. And here, I wanted to ask a couple of you. And if you want, you can, in the chat, respond with some answers, okay? So here's my first question. Okay, you ready? What is the color of a mirror? Okay, think about the mirror. When you look at it, you see yourself. But what color is it? I've been really thinking hard about this, and I think it's mirror colored. But it, I don't know. Anyways, let us know what color you think a mirror is. So that's a hard question. There's another hard question, and I brought my uh, little timekeeper here. And this is uh, really helpful to, to keep track of time, or even to waste time. And so my question is this, as we watch the hourglass and sand go through. My question is this, that if you enjoy wasting time, is that time really wasted? Ask your families this, okay? If you enjoy wasting time, I, I think it's a matter of whether you think it's a waste of time or not. Sometimes um, parents or grandparents, they think something's a waste of time, but it totally isn't. Like watching this. I could watch this for 70 seconds. Okay, that's not a waste of time. I think I know the answer to that one. Okay, here's another question. If anything is possible, is it possible for anything to be impossible? Okay, go ahead and ask someone who's grown up around you to answer that question. Okay, if you didn't hear it, is if anything is possible, is it possible for anything to be impossible, or is that the impossible possibility? Okay, think about that for a while. Good. And then, and then my last one is if you have a clock or a watch that has moving hands, maybe you've seen these before. There are three hands, and I want to know why is it that the third hand on a watch is called the second hand? Will you please tell me? Please help me understand this. 
Okay, why am I asking these silly questions? Well, there were people around Jesus, and Pastor Andy is going to read the scripture about this. There were people called the Sadducees, and they were asking Jesus all kinds of questions. And they were trying to stump him. They disagreed with him about something called the resurrection and whether people would rise again when after they died. In a, in a day far from now, the day of the Lord, they didn't think it was going to happen. They didn't think people would come back to life after they died. But Jesus, he had a different belief about that. In fact, he would show and prove what he thought about that. But this is the question the Sadducees asked. They asked this really silly question about, okay, if a man marries a woman, and then the man dies, and then his brother marries the woman, and then that brother dies, and then the next brother marries that woman, and then that, and they're like seven brothers, and they all die, and then the, and then the woman dies. The question was, well, who's going to be married when the resurrection happens? Huh. Answer that one, Jesus. Well, Jesus had no problem with that question. He knew exactly how to answer it, because Jesus knows everything, and he's trustworthy with his answers as well. And so he said, you know what, that's really not the right question. Here's really what it's about. And he talked and told them the truth. Pastor Andy's going to tell us the answer in a few minutes. But he also said that he was not, that God is not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. Boys and girls, it's important to remember that God never will let us go, ever. And we are alive because of God, and we will always be alive because of God. And we can trust in him and trust in his promise for us. Let's pray about that. God, we thank you. We pray that in our lives we wouldn't be confused by our questions, but also that we would never be mistaken. That we would trust you, God, no matter whether we know the answers or not. That we would trust that you are forever for us and with us. We thank you and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Pete. <clears throat> Great questions. I loved them. And uh, I'm going to devote this week to contemplating your great questions. Uh, do you ever ask a question, and uh, on your screen you get permanent fatal error? You know, you, you send an email and you misplace one period or one letter's wrong. And uh, when you do that, your computer is not subtle or nice. It gives you a long, strange, encoded email that says permanent, fatal, delinquent, error. Uh, it's very shaming. Today, uh, and Pastor Pete is right on track, we are concluding our Questions Jesus Asked Lenten Easter series. And uh, from this point on, no more questions. We're done. And I hope you know I'm joking. Uh, actually, I hope this, this Lenten and Easter series uh, has helped provoke you and will provoke you to more questions. It, it's one of the key ways we grow in our faith and walk with God, by, by asking questions and uh, praying about those questions, talking with others. That's how we learn. And so just think for a moment what might be a question you would ask Jesus today, if you could? And, and stay with me. What if when you ask Jesus your question, he'd look at you and say, error. You're making an error. Right? So an important part about growing up is learning how to ask questions and ask good, right questions. And that brings us to our scripture reading today from the Bible. Today we're reading from the Gospel of Mark, story of Jesus' life in Mark. And we find this scene in Mark chapter 12, beginning at verse 18. Then the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus, came to him with a question. Teacher, they said, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife but no children, the man must marry the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. 
Now, there, there were seven brothers. The first one married and died without leaving any children. The second one married the widow, but he also died, leaving no child. It was the same with the third. In fact, none of the seven left any children. Last of all, the woman died too. At the resurrection, whose wife will she be since the seven were married to her? Jesus replied, Are you not in error because you do not know the Scriptures or the power of God? When the dead rise, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. Now about the dead rising, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the account of the burning bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are badly mistaken. Will you pray with me? Oh Lord, we're not making a mistake when we just stop and say to you, thank you. Thank you for your precious and sacred words of your Scripture and of this teaching. And Lord, please help us now to think clearly, to listen for your voice, and Jesus, to follow you in faith. Amen. So do you give up yet? Uh, Pete, I loved your questions. And, and you and I are on the same wavelength. I've got some questions for you. Uh, and, and Pete and I, we did not uh, collaborate on this. Um, Here's, a, here's another question. What is a question you can never answer yes to? What is a question you can never answer yes to? Give up yet? Let, let's try something easier. Uh, this is kind of a fun one. What did the rapper Jay-Z call his girlfriend after he proposed? Give up? Fiance. You see, his girlfriend's Beyonce. You see what I did there? Fiance. Okay. Let me, let me try one more. I think this is kind of fun. How do you pronounce the word Y E S? Yes. You're right. The answer is yes. Now let's try one more. How do you pronounce the word E Y E S? It's a little harder, right? Do you give up yet? Eyes. Friends, let's, let's use our eyes to ask questions and see what's going on in this passage from the Bible today. First off, you need to know that the Sadducees were sad, you see? And this is kind of a fun mnemonic that I hope will help you remember about these Jewish leaders long ago. The Sadducees were sad for a number of reasons. First off, they believed in a materialistic view of life, which means they only believed that God would bless or help them in ways they could see, touch, or experience in the here and now. They believed that when you died, it's just all over. Your only hope after dying was just to have a nice reputation or memory with other people. And now, it's funny, their only memory or claim to fame in history is being known as the Jewish sect that was told by Jesus they were wrong, dead wrong. They were sad, you see? The Sadducees, I'm told, were a very wealthy and powerful group in the city of Jerusalem. They controlled the business dealings of the city, and they did that by putting their collaborating trust in the Romans. And that worked right up until Caesar, the Roman leader, decided to destroy the temple and burn down the city. They were sad, you see? This political 
religious party was wiped out when the Romans destroyed Jerusalem in 70 A.D. The Sadducees based their beliefs in the Torah, which is the first five books of our Bible of the Old Testament. And according to the Sadducees, they did not believe there was any evidence to believe in any kind of afterlife or to believe in angels or that there was any resurrection from the dead. And so when they asked this mocking question to Jesus about the resurrection, he replies quickly that they are in error because they do not know either the Scriptures or the power of God. Yikes! Can you imagine that being said of you as a leader in God's city, that you are in error? They were sad, you see? And so the Sadducees asked Jesus this testing question. There was a code back in the book of Deuteronomy that says if your married brother dies without any children, it was your duty to marry your sister-in-law so that maybe a potential child could grow up and help take care of the family, that widow. Now this silly question was raised by the Sadducees about seven brothers. Seven brothers who marry this woman and then she dies. And, and if each of the brothers died in turn after each married the woman but with no children, the question is whose wife will she be in this so-called resurrection, Jesus? What does all this mean? Well, you know, at first read it means this woman was bad luck. It also is a little side lesson that women should take out life insurance. But Jesus replied, Are you not in error because you do not know the Scriptures or the power of God? Now, friends, think of this sad thought. The Sadducees were asking the wrong question, but to the right person. They were the leaders, the powerful elite of Jewish society, but they didn't really know God's Scriptures nor the power of God available to them. The question is, do we? How can these principles guide us in living in Jesus' resurrection? How can we be living in Jesus' resurrection according to His Scriptures and in the power of our risen Lord? Well, idea number one from our Scripture tells us that we should not quit. Do not quit. Because of Jesus and His life in human history, we cannot quit. Jesus told His questioners, you do not know the power of God. Do we? Which means, is Easter just one day, a holiday in our lives? Or are we living in that Easter resurrection power every day? If you were worshiping with us last Sunday, uh, you know that we remembered and thanked God for the saints of our lives in this church who have gone on to glory before us. And, and we can see in their lives how they would not quit. And we can thank God for them because Jesus tells us to trust and know the power of God for them. Jesus told the Sadducees, when the dead rise, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. And he's saying here that the, with the resurrection, in the resurrection, there's going to be a new order of existence brought about by God's power. And we will be like angels, Jesus said. Now, not exactly angels. We'll be like angels because the characteristics of our resurrection life is enjoying fellowship with God and living in service for Him. You know, the greatest temptation that Jesus ever faced was to quit. To quit on God's mission of love in His life. To quit and, and to not suffer for us, to not die in our place on the cross. But Jesus prayed, Father, may your will be done. You know, the greatest temptation after his crucifixion was for his followers to just stay quarantined. 
to just stay distanced from others. They were living in dread, fear, and despair. All seemed lost. They were simply counting their losses while heaven was counting Jesus' launch. Three, two, one. Easter. Life. If the resurrection means anything, it means, friends, we cannot quit. And I'm saying this because right now these are the kinds of times that can make us feel like quitting. You know, like you, I've read stories of this virus and its traumatic effect on some. And, and I get it. It has stopped me in my tracks. It makes me wonder what will become of us, uh, my loved ones, our church. And I'm not sure the answers to those questions, but I do know one thing. We will not quit. We cannot quit. We cannot quit being God's Easter people because Jesus beat death at its own game. And so will we. I love how Tony Campolo once said, you know, throughout history, there were times when it looked like the church was about to be completely destroyed. And he says, but you know, each time the church, we Christians showed history that we have a nasty habit of coming back from the dead. Evan Thomas, in his book about the famous lawyer, Edward Bennett Williams, tells of a time in the attorney's life when he was approached by Mother Teresa. Uh, she made an appointment with this famous lawyer to ask for his financial support for an AIDS hospice. But Williams had already told an, uh, an associate of his how he uh, had already decided he did not want to get involved and he had worked out a gentle, apologetic refusal for Mother Teresa. Uh, after Mother Teresa made her request in his presence, Williams gently recited his pre-planned rejection, upon which Mother Teresa responded by saying, well then, let us pray. And they bowed their heads in prayer. And after the prayer, Mother Teresa went through her whole request again, word for word. And once more, Williams, the attorney, said, no, I'm sorry. And again, Mother Teresa said, well then, let us pray. Williams, at that point, knew he was beat. He knew that they would be praying together for the next several months if he didn't do anything. And so he gave in to her request, and he offered his financial support for her cause. Friends, Look at any great Christian, and you will find a person, because of the resurrection, who does not give up. Gordon MacDonald, the pastor and writer, tells of a time he and his wife Gail spent one month in South Africa. And while they were there, they learned of a tragic story of how a black pastor in the Grahamstown district, uh, how... Their home had been firebombed the night before, completely destroyed in one night. And so the Methodist bishop went with McDonald uh, to the scene. They found the pastor and his family standing outside their burned out home. All that was left were the clothes they were wearing and the, the remaining chimney of what used to be their house. But the bishop looked closer at that chimney and notice how the pastor had already taken a lump of charcoal and written on that chimney the words that were spoken as a vow by Methodist pastors in that region. Put me to what you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be laid aside for you. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. God is the God of the living. And because He lives, we cannot quit. The second lesson from Jesus' resurrection life is this. Be a fighter. And by this I mean fight for life, not death. You know, one of the most 
uh, tired and unhelpful comments I hear in my own ministry is this. Well, this just must be God's will for my life. I'll just have to accept it. To which I often think internally, really? Friends, God is not a God of resignation, but of resurrection. Have we accepted that? The Sadducees did not know the Scriptures nor the promises of God. Jesus cites this scene from the burning bush Bible story, Exodus 3, story of Moses. And Jesus says, you know, God said to Moses, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Do you see it? Do you see this? The Sadducees missed it. God did not say, I was the God of Abraham. I was the... No! I am. God is true to His promises. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are living in the resurrection hope of God's promised Son, the Messiah, who has been given to this world in the lineage of King David, a king who was born in Bethlehem, who is Christ, the ever-living King. Because of Jesus' resurrection, we have been given a pattern of life to live as overcomers. That means we do not accept death. We do not live a death life. And when we confront death, we stare it back down. Now, I, I can hear your objections. And yes, there are some things in life we cannot control. There are realities that we have to accept and make adjustments to. Friends, just as long as those adjustments are according to God's life in us. The best way to fight adversity is to fight back. And we see this particularly with health and disease. There was a case research, cancer research study done some years back at King's College Hospital in London. It was a long-term study of, of 57 breast cancer victims who had had mastectomies. And they found in this study that those women who were described as having a fighting spirit were alive 10 or more years later, while those who were described as feeling helpless often died shortly thereafter. And we've seen this same with AIDS patients and others facing challenges. Dr. Larry Dossey once pointed out that the most effective psychological coping strategy when someone is given a verdict of an impending coronary, an impending heart attack, the best strategy is to deny that verdict. Face the symptoms, but deny that a heart attack will be the end. Friends, Jesus fought death and won. Let me say that again. Jesus fought death itself and won. It's why the Apostle Paul would write in the New Testament, O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? When things seem grim, that's when we Christians are great. Now, I want to pause here and, and comment on one of our own in this Northminster church who is a fighter, fighting right now. Carissa Camps is my sister in Christ. She's a nurse practitioner. She's so skilled. She's a terrific church leader in her own right. But when she learned about the tough pandemic situation in New York City, within two weeks, she found a way to go there, to leave sunny, pretty Tucson, and serve in an urgent medical mission in the Arthur Ashe Tennis Center, which has been converted into an emergency field hospital for COVID patients. Should we pray for Carissa? Well, that's, that's not the big question. Of course we should pray for Carissa. The big question is, how can I fight? How can I serve? How can the Lord use me now? You know, the poet Dylan Thomas gives us this great line, do not go gentle into that good night. The best thing for your health is to fight for life. I love the lyrics of Bono from the band U2. In, in one song, he sings about how we are to kick the darkness till it bleeds daylight. 
until we bring God's kingdom here on earth. And you know, this morning, to adapt that lyric to our present situation, I would say our job is to kick the hell out of this pandemic and its effects until we can see daylight again. And I'm not using profanity. It's our job as the church, the body of Christ, to diminish the effects of hell and to lift up the hope of heaven wherever we are. Knowing the power of God teaches you to never quit. Knowing the scriptural promises of God motivates you to be a fighter for life. And thirdly, thirdly, we are to rely on Jesus, the Son of God of life. Jesus told the Sadducees about heaven when they were framing a question based in death. Jesus gave the Sadducees evidence for the resurrection in that God is a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then Jesus concluded with these sad leaders by saying boldly, He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are badly mistaken. And you know you've got it bad when Jesus says to you, you're badly mistaken. But our God, hear this from Jesus Himself, is a God of the living for living the life He alone can give you. It's true. There's not one of us who can fight off death forever. But friends, I know a guy. No matter how heavy your burden is today, there is a good shepherd who wants to walk with you, maybe even carry you. He will strengthen you. Jesus can lead you to a renewed life with God's peace that leads to eternal glory and joy. And so friends, are you asking the right questions with the life you're living now? And are you ready to give up in the right ways of finding God's strength and healing peace in His risen Son Jesus for you? Friends, did Easter go by and were you sleeping? And are you ready to wake up and say yes to the one who can bring you life today, life now, and into God's amazing eternity? I came across this wonderful story, a story, a true story about a man named Arthur Stacy of Sydney, Australia. And in his life, he earned the nickname of being called Mr. Eternity. Uh, apparently, Arthur Stacy grew up in a horrible childhood. He was the son of alcoholics who left him as a child to fend for himself. Um, um, he rarely went to school. He stole from others to support himself. He worked in a variety of criminal businesses as a young man. He became addicted to alcohol. He lived on the streets. But there was this moment in Arthur's life when he heard the message about Jesus and he turned his life over to this Savior. And he was so inspired by the evangelist message on eternity that he just began writing the word eternity wherever he went after that. Now, And he tried to keep this little project a secret, but he would write the word eternity on sidewalks and on public buildings in the city of Sydney each night. He he believed that God was calling him to remind others of the bigger picture, remind them of their spiritual state. And after quite a while, the people of Sydney couldn't stop talking about this mysterious person who wrote the word eternity on all these places around the city. They began to refer to him as Mr. Eternity. It was in 1956 that a local pastor discovered his story, his identity, and interviewed him in the local paper. People learned about his story and his testimony. And Arthur Stacy died in 1967 after writing the word eternity over a half million surfaces throughout the entire city. But his story's not over. In the year 2000, when Sydney was hosting the Olympic Games, the city officials honored the memory of Arthur Stacy by stringing gold lights across the Sydney Harbor Bridge, and the lights spelled out one word, 
eternity. Can you think of that? 33 years after his death, a formerly homeless, illiterate man made his influence felt across his entire city with a message that would last for years. A message that the city would put up in lights years after his passing. Eternity. I want to come back to that little riddle I posed at the beginning of my talk. Wonder if you figured it out. What question can you never answer yes to? It's the question, are you asleep? Are you asleep? Friends, are you asleep to the power and life of Jesus in you? Is today the time to wake up? The other day I came across these pictures that uh, obviously some kids colored onto a sidewalk near where I live. And I hope you can make it out. Be still and know, love never fails. Stop me in my tracks. I stopped, smiled, and praised God. They remind me of eternity. They remind me to not fall asleep to the resurrection life and call Jesus gives me. It's a call to not quit. It's a call to fight for life. It's a call to rely on Jesus, your Savior. How is it for you? Will you pray with me? Oh Lord, this morning, whether we are healing or greatly hurting, Jesus, will you write eternity on our hearts? Jesus, will you send us today in your miracle mission of love? Jesus, will you comfort us and remind us to not quit, but to be a fighter for life and for your love? Jesus, in you we find the right answers of life. Lead us today, each day, as we live in you and for the glory of your eternity. In your name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing one more song. This is Goodness of God, and I hope that you will sing along with us at home. In the goodness.
Thank you for joining us in worship. Please let us know that you are with us on that comment card. And if any of you are interested in taking just that step of faith to trust your life, your situation in Jesus, uh, there's, you can just simply pray, Lord, I need you. Uh, I can no longer be the God of my own life. I'm trusting you. I believe in you, Jesus, as much as I understand. And I want to commit to walking and following you every day in your way of love. It's a simple prayer. But if you make that prayer, please write me and Pastor Pete a note. We would love to pray for you and encourage you. And friends, as you go today, live this day in Jesus Christ. Live with his mission of eternity in your heart. May the blessings of God the Father, the grace of his ever-living Son, Jesus the Christ, and may the power and the peace of the Holy Spirit be with you and guide you today and into eternity. Amen.